you all. Go to hell. October 12th, 1985. Fuck you all. Go to hell. Now, you can make me write in this journal every day, but it's only going to say one thing. Fuck you all. Go to hell. I know you can hear me, you assholes. You better let me out for my brother's birthday. Where are my shoes? Why can't I have my shoes? Fuck you guys! Happy birthday, bro. Thanks. Good to see you, buddy. Now, I know it's my birthday, but I brought you some of your tapes as a present. Yeah, it's cool and all, but they don't let me listen to my tapes in here. What? But music is pretty much the only thing you care about. Why don't they let you listen? I don't know. <laughs> I'll talk to the nurses. Okay. Why won't you let my brother have his tapes? Music is his passion. If you really want him to get better, you should give him his tapes. That music is an instigator of rebellion. We're trying to teach good behavior at this board, and if we give him back his music, that'll work against everything we've taught him up until this point. That's such bullshit. We should give him his tapes. Time for us to go. I wish I could listen to my tapes and calm down, but I can't because you assholes fucking took them. Fuck you, I'll go to hell! I don't know why I bother writing in this personal journal. I know all of you read it anyway. There's no privacy in this place. Hi, Roger. My name is Gary, and I will be your therapist today. Okay. So let's start off easy. How are you feeling? Okay. Well, I've looked at your journal. You, uh, you seem to get mad a lot, and you tell us to, uh, fuck off about five times every single entry. Now, I do need to tell you that this journal is supposed to be for you, not for now, me. Why do you read it, then? Uh, I'm sorry? Why do you read it? Why do the PM staff take it from me every night? Why do you need it? Why can't I just keep it? Um, well, you How would you know to tell me that if you weren't already reading it? I'm not dumb, man. Can I go? I don't want to talk anymore. You know, if you really wanted to help me out, you would let me listen to my tapes. Master of Reality by Black Sabbath is my favorite. Roger, come get your medication. It's nice that you put my name on my stuff, even though you won't let me have any of it. Get up, Roger. It's time for therapy. Just give me some damn privacy in just a minute. Let's go, Roger. Good morning, Roger. Okay, Roger. Let's start off with something rather easy. Word association. I'll say a word, and then you say the first thing that comes to mind. Okay? Okay. Here we go. Blue. Fuck you. Uh, bird. Fuck you. Ronald Reagan. Fuck you. Black.
Fuck you. Okay, this is clearly not working. Roger, I need communication with you. That'll make my job and your time here much easier. This is bullshit. I shouldn't have to be here. This is a huge waste of time for both of us. All I want to do is kick back and put my headphones in and listen to my tapes. Roger, for the last time, you can't have your tapes. But I really want them. Everything would be way better for me. I would just wake up and listen to my music, and the whole day would be so much better for me. Even if I could just listen to Master of Reality once, things would be so much better. Oh, what they? Tell me about the tapes. What's so good about them? Yeah. There's really only one tape that I care about, Master of Reality by Black Sabbath. You see, Black Sabbath is this heavy metal band from Birmingham, England. Their first album isn't very popular, and I've only listened to it once, and it wasn't even mine. It was my friend Mike's, and I was gonna give it back to him, but I'm in here now, so we're gonna have to wait for that. Anyway, I really like Black Sabbath. First time I listened to them, it was a rainy day after practice, and I was stoned. You're not gonna tell my parents about that, are you? You know what? I don't even care. Everyone always says that being stoned is so great. I don't really think so. I always feel really weird afterwards. So I borrowed Black Sabbath's first album from Mike, and I looked at the front cover while I was high, and I felt really weird. It didn't feel good, but I didn't feel bad either. Like, it was weird without trying to be weird. Like, someone made something weird, and they showed a bunch of other weird people, and they really liked it. But you weren't as weird as those people, so it made you look really haggard. I'm sorry, haggard? Yeah, haggard is what we said in school to me, gnarly. Anyway, I got home, and I was all wet and shit. I went to my room and a lot of the pot had already worn off by now because it takes me like an hour to walk back home from Mike's place. I was really tired so I put on my headphones and I put the record on and it was really depressing actually. Ozzy, he's a lead singer, was singing about devils and witches and wizards and corpses and shit like that. But there weren't any stories on the album. Like Rush, they have a lot of stories on their albums. Like if there's a wizard, it'll just be a really long story about the wizard and like him journeying through like a mystical land but if there's a wizard in a black sabbath song it'd be like there's a wizard and he's gonna kill you or if there's a devil it'll be like there's a devil and you are the sacrifice uh they're like stories that you make up around a campfire and you don't have anything prepared beforehand so you just say anything that sounds good i see so are there any songs in particular that use this method of scary storytelling yeah but they're not important but there is this one song called Black Sabbath where Ozzy just keeps repeating, Oh no, no, please God, no. And that's pretty much the chorus of the song. I think it's meant to freak you out, but when I listened to it, it made me feel pretty sad, actually. Like, other music doesn't make me feel that way. Like, if I listen to, like, Blue Oyster Cult or ACDC or something like that, even heavy music is supposed to make you feel good. This is just like, everything sucks and you should feel bad for it. Everyone's always like, blah, 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 drugs are so great, they changed my life. But when I listened to that song, everything changed. I'm tired of talking. Can we be done here? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think we made some good progress here. Why don't you go rest? Okay, kids, have a seat. Our friend Joan here is going to say a few words. Good morning, everyone. Um, we have a little presentation for you today from a former member of our adolescent unit. But first, I want to talk to you about something that is very important to me and important to all of you. Now, I know we're all a little different and we might not always get along, but the thing that can connect us at the deepest level is the spirit, and we're all spiritual beings at heart. For me, that means I read the Bible and pray to God every day. But for you, it could mean something completely different. You don't have to go to church or believe what your parents believe in order to be spiritual. You just have to look inside and listen to that still small voice in your head. Now, I'd like to introduce you all to a former member of the Adolescent Unit. He has since gone on to graduate from high school, and he's here to talk to you today. So let's all welcome Tony. Hey, everyone. How are you doing today? You know what? I think I know how you're doing today. You're lonely, uninterested, angry. You probably feel like you don't belong here, right? I can relate. I felt the same way years ago when I used to be here. You just gotta give it time. This place changed me. Look where I am now. Made me a better man. I'm a high school graduate. Do you know why? It's because the Lord gave me the strength to accomplish anything. I've gotten deep down in the world. Evil ah! fuckers!
think you really need to check on the Roger. From what I've been reading in this journal, things are looking pretty bad. Okay, I'm gonna check on it. Ground control to Major Tom. Oh my god, oh my god. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Sing countdown engines on. Check ignition. The cover of Master of Reality is written in a wavy style that makes you ask, What is reality? It sounds like such a stupid question, but what the fuck happened out there with Tony and Joan and that psycho kid who is now everybody's hero? That was reality. But I also know that Tony's boring reality, where he goes to church every day, is also reality. And if there is a god, then he must be evil if he lets all of these evil things happen to other people, or to let that kid's head be all crazy. And even he couldn't keep track of all the people everywhere. He would go crazy. So who is the master of reality? The whole question is wavy and shaky like the waves coming off of the street in the summer that you see, but you can't really see them. And also the shape of the words on the cover of the album. That's what I think about when I see it at least. If this is a reality where people can just take away my stuff, a reality where I am not in control of my own life, then it's a reality that I don't want to be a part of anymore. Whoever the master of reality is, he doesn't seem to care about my reality if he's letting me live like this, or if he can just let that new kid go crazy like the way he did. I've decided to leave this reality because it doesn't seem to have anything worth staying for.